Okay, so I'm doing these Montaigne Spine Race next weekend. I'm getting all my kit ready and I keep promising people I'm going to do a talk through of all my kit. It doesn't mean to say that this is all perfect or that it's all the very best you can have or anything else. It's just what I use. This will, I completed the Spine Race in 2022, so most of the kit stayed the same. Some of it's changed. So let's just do a, a, a walk through of the table. Um, this is all the race kit list kit, not the extra things that I'm going to be wearing. So if we start at this end, I use the Montaigne Gecko 20 um, backpack. It's one of the lightest 20 litre packs around. I find it's big enough for all my kit. What I particularly like about the pack is the size of the pockets on the front and the sides where I can get a lot of food in. Um, because I don't like stopping to take anything out the back. So as much as possible, I have everything in the front. Small, very small modification I've made to it is a lot of people have had issues with these front straps coming off. Um, I've tied those on there and then the other end, which dangles everywhere, I've just tied that on as well, um, which makes nice organized straps that can't get lost. Um, on the back, um, as required by the kit list, I have my red light. These are ones that we use in water rescue and mountain rescue. They are completely and utterly totally waterproof, 500 hours um, battery life, so that will get me through the race without any issues at all. It's tied on the back there. When, when the pack is packed up, it sits very nicely. My race number will go on between these elastics and these elastics down at the bottom here and sit below the light. Um, Coming around the pack, some other things I have dangling off, these actually sit inside. Uh, I like to carry uh, a super small emergency uh, head torch. Um, it's kind of not really part of the kit list because I have a fully compliant head torch and spare batteries. Um, and then the kit list knife. A lot of people talk about, oh, what kind of knife do I need? These are ideal. Very, very lightweight, small, connected to my pack on a string. Just sits inside the top pocket there. Um, other things on the pack here, I find when I put an extra water bottle in, um, it can sometimes slide out of the pocket there. So I'll put a, an elastic strap on there that I can hook a full bottle in. And actually, it's so one thing I, I didn't um, put on the table here is four 500 mil soft flasks. Um, I tend to use one litre of water at a time potentially one and a half litres which is why that's prepared so I expect one of my four soft flasks is going to stay empty through the whole race but I will be carrying it to be race compliant. Um, there is a whistle on this pack um, hidden in this pocket here but I like to carry a nice big powerful whistle because if I really need it then I want a, a really good one. Compass there um, starting off with the Pennine Way South of course I'll have the Pennine Way North to switch over. Um, GPS device and you notice all these things are tied onto the pack, so I can't lose them. Um, I use a, the Garmin uh, 66S um, that I use. And also I have here my a strap, which clips into a waterproof case for my phone. And that then slides straight into the side pocket on the pack. Um, or I sometimes put that phone case in my uh, waterproof coat pocket. Um, in which case I can just tuck away that strap. But the fact that that can clip and unclip means that when the phone's in the side pocket, I can't lose, I can't lose it. Um, I personally think it's really important to put my waterproof iPhone in a waterproof case because those cases cost very little and means your phone's really safe. So starting to move on to some of the kit that's gonna be inside the pack. Um, so I have a Thermarest, um, Hyperion sleeping bag which is really very small and it is compliant as uh, recommended and confirmed by Lindley. Um, that's in its own compression bag there and it, a lot of this kit also then goes into um, um, waterproof bags and then the pack itself is waterproof. So something like a down sleeping bag I'd have three layers of waterproofing on it. Um, I have a Thermarest Uberlite sleeping mat, again, fully compliant. Um, both of these are not the absolute smallest and lightest, but they're quite far down there. Um, an Alp kit um, 
bivy bag, which I tend to just stuff around other things in, in the pack and it actually gives the pack a really sort of full sort of um, fill to it. So then moving to the front of the table here, I have my um, race compliant cup, 650ml titanium mug, the, uh, the, the gas bottle, some tea bags, and two windproof lighters, because you can never trust one, a stove, and a titanium spoon. And that all fits inside of the mug. A little bit of fiddling that will fit in really smoothly. Um, and then I just have a, a Velcro strap that goes over the top to hold the lid on, um, which is kind of the, the quickest, smallest, lightest way to keep everything together. And before the race, I pack it in such a way to make sure that's not going to go bang, bang, bang while I'm running along. Um, head torch, Petzl Neo Plus with a fully charged battery on it, spare battery, which will be in a poo bag to waterproof it. Um, they're with me all the time. Um, I actually carry another spare battery in my drop bag which can, means that one battery can be in the drop bag on charge while I'm going to the next checkpoint and I carry a spare full head torch in my uh, in my drop bag and then as you saw I've got that mini torch that can get me to the next checkpoint if needed. Um, phone charge pack and lead. Um, one of the things I changed since my last race was to switch to a, a, a Coros watch which in theory will last through the entire race without being charged but I can certainly charge it in checkpoints to, uh, to really make sure it's not going to run out of charge. And so I don't need to be carrying a, um, a charge lead for the watch in my race pack, just in my drop bag. Um, one of the new wonderful pieces of kit that will not come out of my bag through the entire race except the kit checks is that we now have to carry a spade for digging a hole for doing a poo and three uh, poo bags to go with it which i've just taped inside of the handle so i don't lose where they are um, i've done uh, a full spine race dragons back lakeland hundreds uh, attempted solo unsupported hundred mile runs i've done one poo out on the trails i'm very good at making it to the next checkpoint that is completely pointless but the spine race is trying to make the, the packs as full as possible because we want it to be an expedition. One thing that isn't on the kit list is the emergency bivy. They now want us to carry a bivy bag that's reusable and a foil blanket. But if I'm in a serious situation, I'll be taking this emergency bivy out, cutting a hole in the top of it and pulling it down over my head because that's the best way to protect the thermal properties of my body. Foil blankets out on the hill are completely useless um, and, and you, it's very difficult to get into a bivy bag feet first in an emergency situation, especially if you've broken your leg. Putting a broken leg into a bivy bag is not going to work. So you want to go in head first. So you want a dis essentially a disposable bivy bag. They're the smallest and lightest. That's what you actually need to keep you safe on the hill. No idea why it's not on the kit list. So we then have this very extensive medical kit with the foil blanket which won't come out of my bag except for kit checks some tissues that might actually get used and then this is how small i like my first aid kit to be and this is even with the extras that we have this year so extras like having to carry scissors i've got scissors in my drop bag um, and i have a knife that i have to carry so now i also have to carry um, this is my kit, some Vaseline, very important for chafing. I like that just because it's about the smallest thing you can carry. Paracetamol, contact lenses, um, antihistamines, and then the uh, anti-diarrhea um, tablets. And then the thing that's new, which if you keep it sensible, isn't a problem, is carrying um, care tape with you on the hill. Prepared care tape, ready to go straight on your toes is what I would recommend. Actually means you don't need scissors, but we still have to carry the scissors. Um, the hypodermic needles, which will only be used out of my drop bag. Um, alcohol wipes, plasters, um, dressings. 
thing that's not on any race kit lists, which I would always carry, is skin closures. If you get a nice slice up your leg from a bit of barbed wire or something, um, and if it goes deep enough or catch it on something really sharp somewhere, skin closure, steri strips is what you're going to need. Um, you can close up that wound and then you can tape something over the top of that um, and sort yourself out very quickly out on the hill. Not sure why it's not in all kits. Some more antiseptics and some more dressings. And that all goes into that little pouch and into another bag just to keep it all clean and safe. So moving over, something that I do think is very, very good on the kit list is having to wear goggles. On my very first Spine Challenger, I, I didn't put my goggles on early enough and did suffer some uh, issues with one of my eyes getting very dry and then running a lot. And it's, uh, you start to get blurry vision and it's really, really unpleasant and unsafe. So do carry goggles. Um, I have two other pairs in my drop bag because goggles break, they get smudged, all kinds of stuff goes on with them. Carry spares in your drop bag. Things that I won't use looking at the current weather forecast. Um, so I have both micro spikes and the coils. The coils are, are lighter. So when I'm not expecting to actually need them, I'll carry the coils and I would kind of take the micro spikes out of my drop bag if I feel that it's actually icy out there and they might be needed. Um, so you saw earlier my mug and spoon and everything, they're buried deep inside of my bag, unlikely to come out at all. What I also carry on the outside of my pack is a nice lightweight mug. I actually carry it upside down so it doesn't fill with water because it's always raining on the spine. And that means if you see somebody who, uh, a mountain rescuer, somebody who's offering a cup of tea to everybody, you can grab a cup of tea and just walk with it straight away. And in my coat pocket, another spoon. So again, I can eat on the move all the time, not having to unpack my bag. Um, very lightweight stuff, easy to carry. Um, you have to carry a warm layer. Um, this kind of Montane Primal Loft jacket here. Looks quite big on the table, packs up very small, very light, and putting that underneath a waterproof actually is really very warm. Um, spare base layers, Heli Hansen base layer. This one's over 20 years old, and it is the smallest and lightest and warmest of all my base layers. Again, looks big on the table, packs up small. Some base layer leggings, they are full length, have been through kit check four times previously, all has passed. And then moving forward on the table, spare socks, which are waterproof socks, because that's what I'll be wearing. Um, I have lots of different sizes and shapes of waterproof socks. Um, so definitely a pair of waterproof socks in my bag. The gloves I'll be wearing the most are these Montane Via windproof gloves. Um, they, they're my real go-to everyday gloves. As it gets colder, the buffalo mitts, which keep your hands warm even if they get wet. And then a pair of Montane Prism um, mitts, which are really warm, uh, really good mitts, um, which is more for backup. Um, and also waterproof over mitts. And then in my drop bag, I have a lot of spares of, of all these kinds of things. Um, hat and buff, which will be very waterproofed and put away safe inside my bag and then a couple of buffs that I sort of use on the hill which will either be around my neck or in the side pockets of my bag so I can get them again easily. Lots of dry bags, four dry bags there, probably what I usually carry. Um, I'm, I have two waterproof jackets going into my overall kit. This is my more heavyweight RAB one which kind of expecting to be wearing. I also have a Montane spine jacket, which I think is good enough as a lightweight jacket. Um, and if it's really bad, wear both. And a pair of Om Cam Leica waterproof trousers. Um, they're my more sort of lightweight waterproof trousers. I have a pair of Rab ones that again can go over the top if it's really bad. And then you need to carry 3000 calories of food. Um, on the table here is over 3,000 calories of food. I've been through all the labels and added it all up. So I would carry one meal inside of my pack um, and then the, the rest of the calories in snacks and bars. I really like room stuff, you can probably tell here. Um, it's what works for me. I, I don't like gels at all. much prefer the room bars and then I like a bit of variety to go 
um, in between those. The one thing that isn't on the table and it was additional calories on top of the 3000 is I make homemade energy balls of oats and nuts and coconut and ginger, which I really like and adds more variety in. The other thing I carry is I chop down the tubes of electrolyte tabs and carry some ele electrolyte tabs with me. And the reason is that when you get to refill your water bottles part way through between checkpoints, you want to put some electrolytes in there. I personally have electrolytes in all of my water, um, so I carry some tabs with me. And I think if I've got this right, that is fully compliant kit. Um, I'll pack it all together. I'll post a photo alongside the video to confirm, but this kit here, all in my bag, um, the waterproofs would tend to be worn rather than packed in my bag. Um, I don't worry if the waterproofs won't fit in my bag because if the weather's that good, they can hang on the outside and that's absolutely fine. Everything else will be packed inside and with one litre of water, which is what I normally carry uh, when I'm running in a winter race, that will add up to seven kilograms should come in just under seven kilograms or just on the seven, seven kilogram mark. Depends on how much over the top I go with the food. Um, but as you can see, that's with the extras. I have my extra bivy, I have my phone charger. I have more, you have to carry two, at least two pairs of gloves. I carry four pairs of gloves. I go over the 3000 calories um, with the food. And as I say, for me, it comes in with uh, seven kilograms a lot of the difference that i see in other people's kit where it's getting eight nine ten kilograms there's a lot to do with the sleeping bag um, these are expensive to get really light ones the sleeping mat again um, and the pack itself this pack is less than 400 grams i see people with backpacks that weigh over a kilogram there's a so you know there's a big difference straight away again the sleeping bag is about 400 grams as well. Um, I don't remember the exact weight, uh, maybe 500 grams, but you see sleeping bags at a kilogram, over a kilogram. If you've got the heavy pack and the heavy sleeping bag, you're already going to be much heavier. Um, anybody that gets under seven kilograms, I think you're doing really well. You know, it's, it's your, it's up to you whether you, Think you're cutting too much weight by the time you get there you could use a lighter head torch that one's ultra reliable you could not have a couple of the little bits and pieces of extras that i've got might put you in some danger it's it, it's your choice your conscience at the end of the day um i like the extra cup and things like that the um the other thing again i always forget something i haven't put on the table it's not on the kit list i do carry trekking poles um I like the black diamond poles, it's the ones I use and I've um, just put longer elastics on the front of my pack so my poles go on the front of my pack. I like to make it very very easy and very secure to put the poles away because I freeze up my hands for navigation, you know, looking at either my watch, my GPS or my map and compass or to free up my hands to eat. With this pack I can drink with my hands full, which is great. I just turn my head and drink from the bottle. Um, but I find it's really easy to free up the hand. They're really important to free up the hands. Otherwise, I don't eat enough. And uh, eating and drinking on something as long as the spine, where you're going to be out for four, five, six, seven days, it's really, really important to try and keep the calories and the water going in all the time. Thank you.